Well, welcome back to Berserk Series 2. And this is Episode 2 of Series 2. <laughs> I decided to call it Berserk Series 2 instead of Berserk 2016. And uh, first off, I'd like to begin by saying, uh, you know, I apologize for my first review. Number one, it wasn't very good. and But while I stand with what I said, I have to admit that the episode wasn't that bad. I realize now that no, if I want to make these reviews, I have to put my love of the source material aside and accept that this show is what it is, an adaptation. Not something that's going to unfold the way it does in the manga, which kind of sucks, especially when such cool things are omitted, but uh, that's for another time. Uh, this series is for newcomers that haven't necessarily read the manga, and I pretty much decided that's kind of how I need to experience it. I need to watch it as someone that hasn't really read pretty much. I'm pretty much completely caught up. So I kind of got to just read it or watch it as it uh, is unfolded in the, through this series. And uh, I would like to say that, you know, the first episode wasn't that bad. And it really just stems from, um, you know, me kind of already knowing the information being presented while at the same time, they're leaving out a lot of cool and interesting parts. Plus, the fucking animation. Alright, really, my main problem so far has been a lot of that 3D animation. And, you no, know, I'm not a graphics tour whore or anything, but the 3D animation in this series is just, you know, it's so distracting in a negative way that it really made me hate the first episode. And, you know, I'm not the only one. I've read a lot of comments of other people disliking the art direction of this. And hopefully somebody in Japan will hear this and, uh, you know, change it. Or, you know, maybe put more money towards the 3D animation. Though, preferably, just cut it out. <laughs> just stop, make it 2D. But, you know, this is going to be the last time I talk about it. Um, basically, the fucking animation looks like it was done for the ps2 and then they up the polygon count and put it on the ps3 without changing like the animation or trying to make it look smoother and nicer but that no, that's the last time i want to mention it for now i believe hopefully <laughs> so just a little recap of episode one which okay really i'm going to do a proper review so <laughs> of episode one so episode one the branded swordsman you know, our boy Guts, you know, he kicks some ass, saves Puck, which actually happened in the first chapter of the manga. The whole bar fight actually had taken place uh, in front of a, that demon tree. Uh, he basically was under that tree when some bandits were coming by and they were about to like sell some girl to slavery, which happens in, I believe it's chapter 95 of the manga. But um, anyway, the bar fight was pretty rushed. Uh, and the manga part was a lot better um, and a lot more entertaining, especially when Guts, uh, you know, nonchalantly shuts one of the bandits up. Um, the carriage scene um, and the resulting fight was lifted straight from chapter two. So they're kind of bouncing around. Uh, I found uh, Guts and Adolf's conversation was, you know, pretty good and it offered deeper insight into Guts' character. You know, he's always been the type that, uh, you know, you live for your, you know, you only have, one life to live and you live it the way you want which is what he was saying to the to the old man but the thing is guts understands this but he also is aware that there's consequences just a little back up um when he first joined the hawks you know that was his outlook you know trust nobody live for yourself do what you want and he then he's kind of forced into the uh band of the hawks because he gets his ass beat by griffith but then he finds that he actually enjoys that kindredship um you know with the with the members of the hawks and um really the kind of the turning point was he overheard griffith talking to princess um charlotte and about you know griffith was talking about he doesn't really consider anyone in the hawks his friend or even his equal and i think that really got to guts at least that's how i understand it and so he basically decides to leave. And uh, that kind of caused Griffith, Griffith's um, downward spiral, spiral, which led to him getting captured. And then, um, you know, the eclipse happened. And it's kind of ironic because um, 
Griffith said all that, and I think it's mostly true, you know, he's a fucking psychopath. One exception was Guts to that, and Guts was the only person Griffith has really ever considered a friend, at least during that time period. After that decent fight and the tragic end with the girl and the old man, uh, you know, we get to see another side of Guts' personality, which is um, Guts in the denial, really. At least that's how I see it. Uh, I do believe, and it's pretty obvious, he will kill anyone or anything to reach his revenge on Griffith. But, he, you know, he's not a heartless, and he's not as cold as he pretends to be. I mean, his speech about stepping on ants and, you know, that sadistic laugh he does... Uh, is really nothing but a shield he puts up. I mean, he is not evil. Evil people don't puke after killing. <laughs> evil people don't save strangers in a tiny, in a, in tiny annoying elves. And the episode ends with uh, Guts all beat up, tired, uh, you know, after fighting all night, fighting the zombie uh, things in the demon tree. And then the Holy Chain Iron Knights show up. Uh, which leads us into episode two, which is called Holy Chain Iron Knights. Uh, I, I'm guessing that's kind of like a translation, not error, but, you know, it lost, something lost in translation. It doesn't sound that cool translated directly from J Japanese to English. <laughs> iron Chain, whatever, Chain Iron Knight, whatever. But, yeah, like I said, that, lap, that episode wasn't that bad. Um... It didn't live up to the first episode of the 1997 series, but you know what? I give it a 6 out of 10, which is two points higher. Uh, basically, after rewatching it, I like it better now. I like it more. <laughs> first off, I'd like to say that I found this episode a lot better. It covers material from chapter 18 to, uh, or 118 to 122 from the manga. Uh, it also has a few things thrown in that I liked, such as the flashbacks, um, especially to the flashback to the night where he slayed a hundred men or guts killed a hundred men trying to save Casca, even though that's kind of, he didn't really save her. She was almost going to get raped either way if the band of Hawks hadn't shown up, but I don't, it kind of shows that guts suffers from PTSD. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe that, that's really supposed to be what they're trying to convey. It might have just been more about the writers trying to pad out the runtime by throwing in some flashbacks. But to me, at least, uh, it kind of humanizes Scuts a little bit more. And really, the fight was really good. Um, I mean, he had been fighting all night, and but, you know, he was still forced me to reckon with. And I don't know about you guys, but, I mean, I could never get sick of watching guts cut people in half he cut four fucking armored soldiers in half with one swing of sword it's just so cool uh, his fight with uh Izan, uh you know the vice commander of the holy chain iron knights uh it was short um in the manga it's like an entire chapter he fights him but it's actually kind of interesting to see or to see a uh, guts actually losing to a regular ass person for once um Oh yeah, and just a little manga only thing. Uh, actually, before this whole fight ha takes place, before he gets cornered uh, by the Holy Knights, uh, he'd actually just fought a giant demon butterfly, and that's why he actually was able to get captured so easily and not, you know, kill everyone. But you know, they changed it um, for the series for the show. Um, during the fight, we're introduced to Farnies, uh, Franny's. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm, I might butcher some names. And uh, Serpico I was never really a big fan of uh, Franice, but Serpico is fucking awesome. <laughs> and uh, they become major characters later on. Um, Farnice, she's she's way overhead. She has no business leading the knights, <laughs> especially knights that are chasing down guts. So the whole thing with them is um, basically they think. Guts is the um, Dark Hawk or Black Hawk or whatever they call him. No, he's a black swordsman, but they think he's responsible for that giant pool of blood and gore and on corpses that you see in that first episode, which is basically the end result of the eclipse. So that's why they're trying to catch him. Basically, it's pretty obvious Serpico, um, you know, he's an undercover badass. <laughs> and, um, 
without him, Farnese would be dead. She's, I'm not going to say she sucks, but she, without getting too much into spoilers, because I know they're going to explain all this later. She's, you know, she's the daughter of a very rich and power noble. And really, and that's the only reason she's in charge. She's not the reason, uh, uh, a van isn't, um, you know, the commander is because she, he's the vice commander because she has noble blood, uh, in her, um, and just her way out there, religious t- devotion to uh, their religion, to the holy night stuff. Uh, and that's why she's there. But, um, no, it's kind of funny because, uh, you know, without uh, Serpico, uh, you know, kind of kicking, the, throwing that branch, kicking that branch or whatever he did, you know, she would have died. Um and ironically, you learn more about her during that little interrogation she does of Guts than you. she learns of him. Uh, basically, she's arrogant. I mean, obviously, she's a noble. And she's she doesn't like to be questioned. She's very much, you know, not a good leader. She, um, she Like I said, she's arrogant. And she's a little bit of a fucking sicko like of course without getting into spoilers she's a sick she's she's a psycho uh she does and she's kind of lame and uh she still kind of is but she's getting better Uh, i'm hoping that the show tries to make her more likable and um you know and i think it's not really much of a spoiler but she is kind of attracted to guts which is kind of funny because it's like every chick guts comes in contact with (laughs) comes in contact with they always kind of entertain the thought of, you know, climbing on his sword. That's a dick pun. Um, so, yeah, um, obviously Guts escapes, and that's how the episode ends. Uh, he, she, he takes tiny pigtails as hostage and rides off into the night straight towards demons, which ends a pretty great episode. The story is kicking off, you know, introducing the whole religious aspect. And in the previous episode, it kind of introduced, um, like, heretics. So if you don't know, if you haven't read the manga, you might not see that, but they are definitely um, going in that direction. Um, anything else to say? Well, it ends with a cliffhanger, just like in the manga with Serpico, you know, being surrounded by demons, and it's fucking awesome, and I'm really excited to see what happens next. Because I don't know how much they're going to cut out, but that fucking part after is pretty epic and pretty cool. Okay, may not epic, but it's pretty cool. And I just love, oh, I forgot to mention, during the interrogation, you know, Gutch is just like mocking her religion and uh, and he, he ha- he's got more to say about that shit. Uh, so I hope you guys like this. Hope this was a little bit better, a little bit more clear, um, a little bit more, you know, focused than my last, m- a little bit more informative than my last review. If you like it, you know, leave a, like a comment subscribe if you wish and i would love to make more and i will make more and i would just love to hear if other people you know want me to make more (laughs) all right this is daniel and uh have a good night